Hi everyone, welcome to the another video of Postman series. So today in this video, we are going to see what is collection and how the collection can be used in the Postman workspace. Okay. So collection is nothing. I mean, uh, you can group your request into one folder. Okay. So grouping the request into one folder. Okay. So not in the one folder, you can have the subfolder also. We'll see. Okay. So so you can group all your postman requests and examples into the collections to keep your workspace organized okay so how come this is i mean uh, why do we want to store under the collection so for example in the last time we have seen one use case right so when you go for a supermarket account will be created and retrieved and updated and it will be terminated or deleted okay so this is one flow so i want to run this flow for like a hundred customers i want to see and I want to uh, check my server capability and I want to see, check my uh, system performance. Like am I able to create like a 10,000 record per day or not, right? So in that case, what you have to do, you have to arrange all the requests into one collection. That collection you can run for multiple times. Okay, multiple iterations you can run. So now if you go to the postman, so you can see here collection folder. Okay, this is a collection tab in the sidebar. So when you go to here, and creating the collection. So how to create the collections? So here you can see the research statement. A collection lets you group the related request and easily set common authorization test, test scripts and variables and all we see in the upcoming videos. Okay. So if you want to create the collection, you just go to the sidebar collection tab. Just click on this create new collection button. Okay. Otherwise you can go here and from here also you can create a collection. Okay. So just click on the create collection. So it will be, the, I mean, named by the name of the new collection. So if you want to change the collection name, you can change it here. Okay, so I'm, I'm just giving us a base underscore collection. Okay. So after this, uh, what we have to do, so in the, in the collection, so you have this authorization, three request test tab, test tab, variables run, and everything will come. We will see in the, I mean, the upcoming classes. So now after creating the collection, so what we can do, we have to add the request to this collection one by one. So for example, when you expand this arrow, so you will get this add request. Otherwise, if you click on this button, you can see the add request. Okay, so if you want to add the request, then you can simply click on the add new request. So that collect, I mean, that request will be added to this collection folder. Okay, so now uh, we have already some API endpoints. So before that, you, if you want to provide some description about this collection, Okay, so you can give some description like this. So just click on the edit button here. You can see here the postman editor also available and the markdown editor also available. So you can use any one of them. Okay, so now for example, I'm just giving some description. This is for the document purpose. Okay, tomorrow if you are sharing this collection to someone else, they have to understand reading this description and documentation. Okay, this is what the purpose this collection is being created. Okay, so this is. Uh, Okay. And if you want to do some activities, like so if you want to bold the text and if you want to, I mean, this is like an editor. Okay, you can do everything. So if you want to upload some picture, all the options are available. If you want to upload some link, also possible. Okay. So after this, just click on the save button. So this documentation is nothing, it is for the understanding. So what is about this collection? That information and all you can give it here and you can save. Okay. So after this, you can see some comments also. If you want to provide, you can provide. And this is a chain talk. So who's created this collection and who made changes on this collection or not. And this is for pull request. So when the team, as a team, when you work for a team, so you can go for this pull request. So whatever the request is done by someone else, you can approve them and you can create them. I mean, you can, you can make them. So fork in the sense, you can fork your collection. I mean, uh, forking in the sense, like if you want to take the copy uh, from one, one workspace to another workspace, you can do this option. Okay, and this is I in the sense information. So this is all about this collection detail. So for example, every collection will have unique ID because it is being controlled or being stored in the Postman cloud server. Okay, and you will have all the details when it is created, who created, and is there any mock servers or the monitors, all the things it will come in the tab this time. Okay, so now we can close this. Okay, and if you want to, again, the fork is available. If you want to share the collections, that is also possible. Okay, so just click on this button. You can see the share option. 
So in the shahar, no, if you are working as a team, then you can you can directly using that user ID of postman, or they can you can provide the user email of this particular postman user, and you can send out to the I mean you can share the collection directly. Otherwise, you can go to the JSON link, okay, and just click on this get JSON link button. You will get one URL. This is also being maintained by the postman. You can see get postman dot com collection. This is a collection ID, okay. And when you, I mean, update the link and just copy that link and share it with the, your uh, team members so they can import the collection and they can start working on it. Okay. So import export, I will tell you later. So this is share. And if you want to move the collection between the another workspace, right? So I have a list of workspace. I can move the collection to the one workspace to another workspace. And run collection will come to this later. And if you want to edit the collection, so you can edit this details. And you have add request. So again, you, you can create the multiple folders. So folder within the folder, a collection within the collection, and monitor collection also will cover later. And fork already we have seen a uh, view, change log, and documentation also here it is coming. Okay. And one more thing, export. Export. So the share also it will export your collection as a link. Okay. You can directly download from the Postman cloud server. So if you don't want to store via I mean, uh, share via this uh, JSON link, then you can export as a JSON file. Okay, so from the JSON file, you can send them. I mean, you can share it in the email or any chat. You can send that. So, I mean, they can just do the import with the JSON file. So that collection will be stored in their particular workspace. Okay, so this is all about the collection. So now I want to store the things. So for example, this is our post method. Okay, so for creating the users, correct? Right? So let me save this. So when you click on the save button here, it will asking you the folder to be saved. Okay, so without collection folder, you cannot save there any request. So I'm just clicking on this one, and this is my. Okay, let me give it as a. This is a request name. Okay, request info name, and you can suggest <coughs> just save this one. Okay, so this is got saved under this particular folder. Okay, after save, you cannot see this orange line indicator. Yeah, you can see this is for, for the rest of the request, you can see the orange line indicator is coming because this is not saved. Okay. So when you don't see this orange line indicator for the particular request, it means that is being saved. So now the next one is get method. Okay, so this one also I'm going to save. Either you can use the save button or you can click on the control yes in the windows. So this is my second test case, which is a get method. Okay. So after this, I'm going to the put method. So just, I'm going to save this one also. This is put and I'm going for a patch. And I'm going to save the delete one also because this is my use case, right? I'm going to create okay, delete. Okay, delete. Let me save this. So this is my use case, right? So if I want to uh, experiment this one, so I'm creating which is a post method, a retrieving which is a get method, and a put patch for update and delete. Correct. So these are the total five requests which I have for this particular user, I mean, particular use case to create, retrieve the record, update the record, and delete the record. Okay, so now I have arranged everything in this, this particular folder. Okay, so this is called one collection. So now what I can do, let me close everything. Okay, this is my collection. So if I want to create any record, so what I will do, so earlier we are going to this particular, I mean, particular request in the workbench. So then we are clicking on the send button. Okay, so let's see. Uh, so this user is already created, I think, triple two. So let me delete the user first. Okay, now the user is deleted. So let me use the same account user for update also. Here also I've been going to give us a triple two. And the port also I will give it as a triple two. Because we are creating only the triple two ID. Right, so that's a reason. So now, if I want to run this use case, what I will do, I will have to go to the post method to create the record, and I have to go to the get method to retrieve the record. Right, so here also we put triple two. Okay, 
and I want to go to put method to create the record. I mean, update the record and patch also to update the record and delete also to delete the record. So this is what the use case we are doing now. We are going to each request and we are running one by one. Okay. So if you want to run everything in a core, I mean, a single, single thing, then you have to go to here and just click on the run collection button. So this is called runner, postman runner window. Okay. So from here, you can see this order, run order will be as a save the way that you have arranged in the code. Okay. It is look like a 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, right? The same run order will happen here also. So if at all, if you want to deselect everything, you can deselect all and you can select all and you can reset also. Okay. So now I want to change the order. So that is also possible. For example, I want to run patch. You can, I mean, just drag and drop like this. Okay. And now you can directly go, go to this run base collection. This base collection is nothing, our collection name folder. Okay. So I'm just clicking on this one. So now you can see the collection will run one by one in the sequential order. You can see the post is executed. After that, get patch, put, delete. Okay. So this is how the collection run will happen. And here you can see this is a source of runner because this is a collection runner. Okay. And here some other sources also available. We'll see in the future. And is there any environment variable we are not using so far? And this is one iteration and the total time taken. And the test also we'll see in the future. And average right time response for the all the requests is it is taking totally for 56 milliseconds for the average response. Okay. So this average is for complete five requests, it is not only for the one request. Okay. So now this is a runner. So again, if you want to run, so here in the runner window, you can see run again option also available. So you can simply click on this run again to, to go for one more run. Okay. And new run. So when you click on the new run, so the new run will give you another same window to run it again from the base. Okay. So after this, you can export this results as a JSON file. So when you click on this export results, you can see this is uh, exporting as a JSON file. Okay, so here it is. Okay, you can see it is, it is going to export your result as a JSON file. If you want to export, you can export. But anyway, in the future, we will see how to generate the HTML reports. Okay. So this is how the collection will run. So now if I go to the new run again. So this is, we are running manually. Okay, we are running the manually through from our Postman. So we have some other options also using the Postman CLI. We will cover in the upcoming topics. Okay. So now by default, it is running for only one iteration. Right. So if you run this, you can see the iteration count is one. Okay. You can see here as well, iteration is one. So now I want to run for multiple iteration. I want to check, like I want to run for a thousand records because I want to make sure, I mean, my system is capable of creating a thousand records and modifying them and deleting them to all the actions. Okay. In that case, you can increase your iteration. So for example, I'm going for a three iterations. Okay. And when I click on the run collection, now it will run for three iterations. Okay, so three iterations in the sense, like a post, get, put, patch, delete. Okay, it will not run three times post or three times get. Okay, it is an iteration. So it will go for one iteration, again, one more iteration, again, one more iteration. So now here you can see this is iteration one. So the right side, iteration one, and this is iteration two, and this is iteration three. So totally we are executed 15 requests as a three iteration because we have five collects, I mean, five requests and points in the collection. Okay. So now again, some other features also available. So if you want to set some delay, okay. So by default, the iteration will be one. So if you want to increment, I mean, you can increase them like a two or four or five or hundred also. Available. Okay. So the delay in the sense, so if you want to make some delay in between the each request before the request gets processed. So for example, I want to, after creation of the record, so the developer might have said, you have to wait for 10 seconds or five seconds to, to get the things stored in the database. So in that case, what you can do, you can use some delay in the milliseconds. Okay. So for example, I'm giving us a 4,000 milliseconds, which is equivalent to four seconds. Okay. So now what happens now? It will wait for a four seconds before the request is processed. Okay. So now I'm going to just click on the run base collection. Now you can see the request is sending till. It is not completely processed. It is waiting for a four seconds for the each request. Okay. So sometimes you will get some explicit, explicit conditions like this. So you have to wait for a 10 second or, or you have to wait for a five seconds to, to, to retrieve the data from the database after creation. So in those scenarios, no, you can, up, I mean, you can apply this delay. Okay. 
and you can send the data from the external file. So this one also will will cover later. And when you click on the advanced settings, so here also you can do some settings. So now when I run this collection, so how do I know what went in the post method? Okay, so just click on this post. You can see this is a URL that went, and these are the headers that went, and these are the request body that went. Okay, so this is a request body. And if you click on the uh, response header, no, nothing is coming, and the response body also not coming. Okay, but when you send the post method, you will see some the response, right? So the data that you have sent, you have to see the same thing in the response as well. Why this is not coming? So just go to the new run again. So here we have to do something in the advanced setting. So in the advanced setting, you can see the save response, right? So logging response will allow you to view the response header, response body from the request. Okay, so now when we check that one, it was coming as a nothing. So you have to enable this again. Make sure when you enable this, this might impact your performance. Okay, so if you are running for the bigger collection, like if it has like a thousand requests or hundred requests, so that might be impact your performance uh, running your collection. Okay, when you save this one, and if you run the collection again, so now the the, the response details will be coming here. You can see the response header is coming. Here it was not coming. So if you click on the response body, response body is also coming now. So for similar to the get method and put method, everything. Okay. So if you want to see the response details, so you have to select this checkbox in the advanced setting, which is save response. Okay. So keep variable also same. So when when enabling this, will write the value to the variables and end up the each run. Okay. So this is by default it will be checked. So let it be. And this cookie and all you can ignore them. That is not an issue. Okay, so update cookie stored. So everything it will be updated in the cookie session. So when you click on this cookies, so whatever the activity that you have done, it will be stored here. Okay, so this is all about the collection running. Okay, so we have to create a collection and we have to run like this. So if you want to change the order, you can manually change. We can control the order through the code also. We'll see that later. Okay. So what we have seen, we have seen how to create a collection and what are the options that are available in the collection. You can share, you can move to another workspace, you can run the collection, edit, add request, add folder, monitor, we'll see. Okay, so change log. So you can menu what are the activities that particularly done on this particular request. You can see that and you can export them and you can duplicate them also. So for example, I want to duplicate this same. So when you click on the duplicate, so one more request will be, I mean, one more collection will be created. Okay. So it is more like a duplicate copy page. So if you want to delete them, you can delete them. So when you delete them, so it will be stored in the your trash, okay, postman trash. So when I click on the delete button, you can see the collection is deleted and you can go to this trash. From the trash, you can see it is, it is available. Okay, and it will be available only for one day. You can see resources will be removed from the trash automatically after one day. So by mistakenly, if you delete it, so just you can restore from here. Okay, but it will it will it will have only one day as a lifetime because we are using the free version of Postman. Okay, so if you are using the paid version, I think you can have for uh, thirty days. Okay, if you are using for the Postman professional or enterprise version, then you can have for a ninety days. So since we are using the free one, it will be deleted only one day. Okay, so within the one day, if you want to recover, you can recover. Otherwise, it will be deleted. So that is all about the collection. So when you click on this collection, here also you can see some details. Okay, so you can close this for the documentation purpose. Here also you can see the same things. Okay, so create a fork in the sense. So you can take a copy. Okay, so if you want to take a copy, which workspace? So you can select to, I mean, it is more like another thing, like a moving workspace to another workspace. You can take a fork, copy of this collection. Uh, yeah, that's it. So we have seen what is collection and how to manage the collection and how to run the collections. So what are the options that we can do with the collections? So in our next video, we'll see about the next topics. Thank you guys.